Um, and so ba basically, yeah, testing, right? So, so for plan in particular, people have been wanting requirements management and, and portfolio. Um, and, and quality management. So requirements management is just like the really old school boring thing. And so we're not obviously not going to build that into GitLab, but we're going to create some things that are close enough and then we're going to call it requirements management. So that's the, at least in MVC strategy. So for example, inside GitLab, you already have issues and we're going to have, <laughs> like you already have epics and we're going to have epics of epics and we're going to have issues of issues. So you essentially have a way to have multiple levels and then that is requirements, right? So we're going to brand it requirements management. I'm going to talk to John. We're going to figure something out. And maybe we'll have something to make it a little bit, a little bit cooler in this way. So, <laughs> yeah. so um, but, but that's what we're going to do. So I, I wanted to figure out what's like the equivalent for quality management that we could do. And so I've been really scratching my head for a long time. And then so my little knowledge of quality management or, or like test management is going to be um, is very similar to requirements management in that you have like traceability um, uh, like you have a you know the concept of a traceability matrix you have requirements and then you have requirements that satisfy requirements or you can have a bunch of test cases that satisfy that requirement so I think like we've already have that so what I just described the multiple levels we have that already so I, I'm going to call that definitely going to call that requirements management I'm probably going to also be able to call that test management or quality management but then what's the next step beyond that? And so I have a bunch of links in the doc that's in the um, agenda and uh, Mech has it open. So Jason, it's in the, uh, it's in the invite. I already have um, put a bunch of links there. And so I wanted to make sure that um, I want to get your ideas in general, specifically Jason, because I know you're doing things like, um, usability testing, accessibility testing, and all that makes sense in like CI world. So maybe like if everything I said, if you have no questions or comments or everything I just said, maybe we can start, I mean, you explain to us what's your vision of, of testing and verify stage and see if we can like hijack any of that or, or and just call it quality well, management. <laughs> or yeah, I just yeah, wanted to get uh, your vision not there. created for, yet for verify. <laughs> so I, I don't know yet. Um, and so, so, but what, what, what do you mean by like, are, do you have the, you have the doc open? So I'm, I'm looking at usability testing and mm -hmm. accessibility testing. So, so for one specific question I had was when you say like SS, like maybe just usability first, what does that even mean? Is that just like literally, um, like, like, uh, UX type usability testing? Like, yeah, it's like, a like UX uh, designer? Yeah, design feedback, that sort of thing, usability. Right. Uh, and, and is that would be like, is that like, um, uh, do you see that as part of the, the CI, like sort of like a, there's a review app and then you can go in and then start clicking around and then measure. Yeah, your more tied to the review app side of things than the pi CI pipeline side of things, but yeah. Right, okay. Um, like you could imagine a feature where you go to a review app and you're able to provide, you know, feedback or something. Right. Like there's some, there's some, some fields. There's some okay. It could be internal users. It could be external users, but it's a way, a way to collect usability feedback. You probably right. saw those category epics. They're all just like TBD, TBD, TBD. Yeah. 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 I'm looking at them. Uh, yeah. Yep. That, that makes sense. And then same for, and then is that the same vein for accessibility testing? As no, well? accessibility is different. Um, and this one is more tied to like compliance. Uh, well, so there's two, I guess, major reasonings for it. One is that it's um, it's something that people seem to be caring more about these days in terms right. of making sure that their sites are accessible in terms of doing the right thing, right, right, uh, and making sure that you're serving underserved uh, users. Sure. Um, so that's one aspect of it, and why people are prioritizing it. And then there's also a um, like, especially for U.S. federal and maybe other countries, federal um, or sorry, governmental. Um, rules there's um like if you want federal grant money in the u.s you need to be able to build build, build be building an accessible website so there's accessibility suites out there that make sure that uh, you don't have colorblind problems or right you know that it has features for for blind or other otherwise um uh, users with uh limit limitations so is that like at the code level that you're going sort of like security that you're going to hook into gitlab or is that separate 
when you said like there's like test suites and so uh, it's more like front end testing so it's more like selenium than security testing okay but but it is automated it wouldn't be like it would be automated yeah okay yes i think i think we have a few libraries already that we can reuse like there's an a a t t t from paypal or something right. or yeah. there's a bunch of other libraries that you can just run your checks on the style on the ui component it's going like, to there are a bunch of rules that it would check against them yeah, we'll highlight, yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, Jason. There's, there's more and more stuff out there for that. Right, yep. right, right. That makes sense. Um, so, so in that, that when I say security, say hi. So when I say security, that like in the sense that it's part of like you're gonna bake something into the product, like you're gonna have some libraries. Yeah. Uh, whereas the usability piece is you're you're giving some UI for the users to to interact. Yeah, though we are potentially providing a way to collect that feedback and then also okay. like maybe have so controls so. on the. Okay. Um, you know, if you go to a review app that, you know, how uh, if you're logged in as a operations person to GitLab.com, right. you can see, like, the special toolbar that, that shows you, like, At something. Like, right. we can, I can imagine building something that, like, puts, you know, the, the web application inside of a, right another feedback control or something like that. I don't know exactly, but. That makes sense. Okay, so, no, that, that definitely clears it up, the, the two there. And then I saw you closed UAT texting, which I understand is, like, my understanding is it just stands for user acceptance testing. Yeah. And that's literally like the business feature itself. That's like the yeah, business sign off, like where you get like right. a business person and bring them down and make them sit in front of the computer and say <laughs> it's good enough for you. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, and we uh we removed that because um it's sort of a manual thing for one. And also it doesn't really fit with the GitLab kind of you know, way of working or like what right. our values are is like, you know, having a yeah, like a state. having an executive come down and manually right, like, right. Okay. Uh, as part of your delivery pipeline is not a... Okay. If somebody wants to do that, they can do that. Um, but we're not going to build it as like a first class you know, way of working. Okay. And, uh, and a lot of it's honestly covered by the uh, usability testing. Right, right. I uh, imagine like a lot of the features you build there will yeah. be able to... But that said, it is a different thing. It's just not a thing that we really believe in as a company. Okay. Okay, <coughs> makes sense. Um, okay, so, and then so Mac, so when, when we say quality management, last time I checked in with you, that is yet a different thing from what Jason's been saying for the last 10 minutes. It's more automated? Is, is it closer to the, to the feature itself? Or how do you think about that? So I, I think we need a test case management um, functionality. No, no, it could be a bare bones thing, I think. Even though we don't use it as as uh, our test automation engineers, because we, we don't want we don't want any manual tests at all. Um, we could we could use some of it to add stuff some exploratory test flows, and then dog food it on our own. And then, but I think there are a lot of customers who are still on um, waterfall, moving into agile. They still have a quality suite that they need to run manually. Right. And I think that that will help a lot of customers, and that will add a lot of value. So yeah, that that'll be the first thing I, I would I would help. Um, both of you look into, um, and then how we can link those test plan test cases to test plans and link it to requirements because that's like that's the crux of CD um, anywhere is they have to all go together product requirement test requirements product requirement test requirements ship go to production boom so that's one on quality um, I think that's the biggest one actually and and uh, it could, I have I have a, a demo thing uh, set up um, for both of you to take a look um, there's this um, I was involved in this Ruby conference organizer and they're using this tool to plan their stuff. And I think that the table view is really awesome. I think it would be awesome if you could just build it inside GitLab. You have something on your computer right now you want to show? Uh, yeah, one second. I am uh, Notion. Well, let, let me, let, when I throw it back to you, let me re-lock okay. it. I think it locked me out. Um, this is going to be on, on YouTube. Okay. So let me prepare it. The other thing I want to talk about clients that I think are a, a blocker for integrating a bunch of stuff right now in-house, uh, like Omnibus release management testing. Um, Marin is working on the delivery team, which they have their own pipelines. They have Git bot, sorry, Slack bots and release, and they want to tie it back to our projects. They want to see a multi-project pipeline. That's one. Right. Um, the other thing is um, we want to do cross-browser things in the Selenium space. Like, right. And channeling all our inner sits, we should be ambitious. So even if there already is Sauce Labs or Browser Stack or right. a Visual Diff engine out there, we shouldn't be afraid to bake it in our product to make sure, it a sure, one sure. size. Um, um, yeah. 
So that's the other venue that I would like to help yeah. um, both of you explore. That makes sense. Um, so let me talk about the, um, okay, as I let you set that up, Mac. So the way I see the test case management thing, so when I look at the doc that I share, somebody already created GitLab Quality Center. So that's, that's exactly what like, I think that would be. And so uh, I, I don't think that's um, high. So yeah, no, we just created this uh, old, older PM from way back when. Um, but I don't, I don't think this is a, something that we will do as a, as a high priority uh, in the sense that making like individual test cases an object or, or maybe we'll, I don't know, but it would be, it would, like I see that as similar to requirements management. We, we already have issues and epics and then so we would somehow rebrand or repackage in the UI somehow as those being test cases. Um, and so since you can already link issues together so that that's really natural, right? So whether an issue serves as a requirement or serves as a test case, then it can link to each other. So, so that, that makes sense. So from, that's why I wanted to bring this conversation back to then. Uh, there, there was one, um, well, actually, before I go to that one, let me show you something that Sid suggested as, a, as an idea. So if you click on uh, requirements dashboard concept from Sid. So if you click on the third bullet point in the doc, um, like it just like Sid pr proposes something. I just wanted to get the feedback of both Jason and Mech. Like, does it make sense to you? Like, would that even be useful? It just seems like a cool idea, but I don't even know like how useful it would be. So it's the third link in the in the doc. Jason, what do you think? You're on, you're unmuted, so you're ready to speak. Yeah, I'm just trying to read this and understand what I'm looking at. It actually makes sense. I actually think Copies is also trying to do something like this. I think it's called Dev Optics or something, um, where they, they call it data from everywhere and they display it in an easy to ingest manner. Um, but, but like, how, how is this used? Like, is it used operationally by like an SRE? Is it used by a developer as part of like CI? Is it? It's probably used by the Scrum Master. And it's, well, you don't have Scrum Master, but yeah, like the, <laughs> the product lead. Like, I, I think product managers, when a feature is about to be shipped, will find this useful because then you have a list of issues and it right. state all, all the issues. I'm oh, sorry, merge requests. So this would be a way to see a summary of all the merge requests that are in your release and all the issues associated with them? Yeah, I would say this may even replace the, the status in our kickoff document where like this feature is merged. Like mm -hmm. you just go to your dashboard for that feature. Like it's all green, we're good to go and boom, you're done. Yeah. Uh, instead of like everybody, all the project managers like going through all issues and it's just done, it's just done, it's just done. Um, I think an MVC for this is, maybe a thin layer that wraps around our issues and merge requests and build results. And right. this, yeah, this is your, yeah, right, this is your status. It makes sense. Um, How do test cases tie to this? So right now, the test cases are essentially in an issue and we, we call it a test find issue and that's it. And then when it's closed, um, the test automation is all done. So we're just using the blue the blue uh, status on a test plan issue is closed to signify that, hey, it testing is done. Okay. So there's, there's that one, one point that we can uh, leverage or lean on. Um, but like underneath that, it's just all linking related issues and merge requests and making sure that those test automation are closed out. And we're using a combination of milestone and labels. Like there's a label for test plan and that test plan has created it and then and the data just flows back in. So it's really, Really basic, but it works. Um, you know. When you when you say the test plan is closed, Mike, you mean that the code has been written for the automated test case, right? Right, and we and we don't close the test plan until everything is done. Um, okay. Another another challenge on that part is some of our test plans aren't closed, and it's closed after a feature has shipped to production, and that's also a problem of um, resource and scale. We just don't have enough people to 
to work on it. But ideally, it should be closed out together. Um, and then you say, hey, your feature is done, and then right. you go to production. OK, that, that, that makes sense. Um, so, so I just want to ask, for this particular feature, I think it's like Mac, you said it's a great feature. I didn't even think of it from the perspective like for like a, a release or a sprint type of thing. It, that makes sense to me now that you describe it as like a, like a sprint retro, or it could be like before you release something to production, uh, it's in a certain environment and you're looking at everything is green and you're, it, it looks good. So I think that's fine. But from a, like from a, the, the personas that you're looking at, Jason, does like, would they even care about this feature? Would they find it useful or is it sort of not related, you think? Would it help solve any of the things that you would need? Well, I think like having, um, yeah, like information about from a release perspective, if, if everything is tested is interesting. Okay. If I've, I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure I've understood. I've understood what this is correctly. It's a requirements dashboard, but I've just never well, heard requirements in this. But no, no, yeah, like I, I, I'm put it this way. I don't, I, I, I don't, I, I'm just treating Sid's uh, uh, suggestion as a literally a UI feature. And I don't mm -hmm. even want to care, um, where it falls into. It seems related, so that's why I'm bringing it up here. But like, yeah. I'm asking you from first principles, I guess, both from, from you and, and Mac, like, would this solve anything from your folks' perspective? And yeah, and I, but, but the, and what this is, is the part that I'm not 100% sure on. Yeah, so if it isn't, then the answer is just, it could just be a bad idea, right? Like, that, that's my point. I just wanted to validate, like, if it's even a good idea. Avoid, avoid feature factory at all costs. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, so, so if it's not a good idea, like, like this is like Sid looked at this and he's saying like, oh, this could fulfill requirements management and quality management. And I like, I'm like, are you sure it doesn't sound like it? And so I just wanted it, to get it. would be a nice to have as like a single pane of glass view, but right. we would still be missing expanding on test plans. Right, right. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, one yeah. problem that sounds related to what, what I'm hearing is that, that I know is important is like, and maybe it's the same thing you're saying, Mech, is that um, like even for our own internal releases, um, uh, as we get close to releasing 11.5, um, what is the state of, you know, the testing and ish, all the issues and all of the merge requests that are part of it? Um, a view of that is super, super useful. Um, like a progress, you think, you mean? Like yeah, or progress or risks or like, um, you know, like how, how, how are we tracking to completion? What are the things that are off of track? Um, what are, you know, are any of the test cases like are any of the issues like having like a higher percentage of test cases not passing excuse me sorry I sneeze there so if we want to talk like the, about if you want to talk about pass fail rate we need the test result object yeah because. yeah and that and that makes sense to me the requirements driven development and like the links to nasa documents about how they do software development i don't know right 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 yeah Okay, no, no. That, I, so if this is like NASA style development, I don't know. But if this is like um, a dashboard about a release, then that's an, an, an interesting and valuable. Okay, okay. Okay, so I mean this, uh, I'll create an issue out of this. I, I, I'm, from what you folks have been saying and what I've been thinking about, I don't think it's like a super urgent priority. It's like a, it's a nice thing. It could be something to explore further, but what I wanted to get out of this meeting is at least like a direction of what I can call quality management. And it seems like it has to be somehow related to test cases. And so let me, I guess, bring the discussion back to um, that thing that I pinged you folks on like a couple months ago, which is um, test run object. And so the concept here is that you, you go back and update an issue or an MR based on a pipeline result. And so is that, does that still make sense? Is that, could you call that quality management? Like what, how, how, how do you folks think about that? So yes, the test run object will have to come from a test definition somewhere. So I think we will need a test case management because to, to, for me to update, for me to update something, right? Right. You need to create the test case. That, like, that, that thing could be an issue. That thing could be an issue, though, right? That, that's sure. We, we could reuse issues and we package okay. it and, and um, 
because okay. it's already scaling, might as well just build on top of it and, and make, make sure this is, okay. yeah, this is, this scales. And then so, um, but it does make sense from your perspective, Mech, that uh, a, a CI thing, like a pipeline, a CI abstraction, an object would go in and up, go backward and update. Update something. some data, yes. I would some, yeah. some requirements, some test thing that a non-computer person like a human said at some point in the past. Right, right. Um, I, I was establishing the traceability. That's the whole point that like it links the traceability, it verifies the traceability. Right. right. So what, what I've seen in the past is it's called a reporter mechanism where you would okay. stop your test cases where, hey, this, this test is this ID. And you can choose whether if it's a new test, you, it will go and dynamically create a test object for you. So a human doesn't mm. have to go okay. and and create a hundred tests manually. You just run the test once, enable auto creation, and then boom, you have a, a, a bunch of things created for you ready and disable it again. Then right, interesting. It, iterate, polish, iterate, polish. Um, that would be something I would, that would that, be the direction I would take. That's interesting because we could have something where like the, the pipeline refers to an issue if you've given one. If it doesn't, maybe it creates an issue for you. Right. The issue right. being the test result object whatever you want to call it okay um okay J jason I, I forget i thought i thought I, I saw you leave some comments i forget this was a long time ago did you have any thoughts on this one on like how like sh how should ci integrate if at all uh, integrate to which part like having does it make sense that a pipeline like when a pipeline runs a uh, a set of tests essentially and whether the, the the end result of the pipeline or, or individual jobs within the pipeline will go back and update you know some test object some issue object if we're calling that in, in GitLab. Uh, it makes sense in a general sense I just don't know what that thing would be or where they would find it or how they would know what to map it to. So would you would it be something that like from a, from a CI perspective, do you see users going in and writing like a script and then having the script, like as part of the script, you, you put in like issue IDs or, or like, you know, like a project URL in GitLab and it integrates back or would it be like a native feature inside um, the verify stage? Like how, how would that be like, because I know with, pipelines you can do so much with the scripting itself so I, some, sometimes mm -hmm. i don't understand whether you offer it as a first class citizen feature inside GitLab or you expect the user to code the script themselves so like mm -hmm. where, where if the i mean if the test plans or requirements are part of GitLab, then we should figure out some way to wire it automatically i think okay but i just don't know yeah so i don't know what they are like i said i don't know what they are or how they would be looked up but um I would think if it's all within GitLab, it should be integrated and not okay. like you have to write scripts to wire parts of GitLab to itself. <laughs> Essentially, right. And then, but I mean, as we build this up piece by piece, like, you know, like for example, like the, you, right now, there's nothing stopping somebody from doing everything that we've just said in the past five minutes. They can write all this inside a, a, a GitLab script, right? A, a, like a YAML file or whatever. Like it can all be done. It can create a, yeah. an issue. From GitLab, they can call the API. That can all be done right now, right? Yeah, so like there's JUnit. That most tests output JUnit XML. Okay. Um, and there's probably scripts to parse that XML to create issues or... Right, um, okay. But like the question is like, if for it to work in a scalable way, like where should the issue be created? Who should it be assigned to? What should it contain? Those things would be hard for us to make a generic rule across all customers at GitLab that um, can like do that mapping. Okay. Um, and especially without knowing like what exact, like if, if the, yeah, so like, kind of, if you kind of work it back, there's a pipeline running that's associated with a SHA, uh, right. that, a push, um, and a test case runs and fails. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, how do you find that magic issue or whatever the object is that it's that failure is supposed to be associated with? Right. And so my... In my a general original, way. Like in you a general way. Yeah. You can always, exactly. My, my original thought was that, does it make sense to be like coded into the test case itself? 
so does I guess this is a really a, a really mech question where like is or I don't know, both of you are smart, so you should know the answer to this. I don't like does it does it like when you're doing modern development, would you write a test case? Because like would you write a test case that refers to when you write tests in, in, in modern development, you, you, you write tests that refers to features, but you don't refer to like issues, right? Or you don't, you might refer to requirements. You don't refer to the issue where that feature was introduced? Yeah, or? yeah, like you might. No, 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 we, we, we want that to be too much of a hard link. Uh, I think we go by test suites, test suites and test case, like one, one file will be a test suite, and then like in each file, you have like different test cases. Okay. That I think I think Jason. But, you, but, brought up but it is okay. But you can refer to to something beyond the code. Is my point. You can refer yes, to something. Yes. That that I, is above read, the code. Okay. I've seen and, and my team in a past company as well where, at the start of the test, you will code the ID of the test. <laughs> exactly. That's my point. Yeah. That's my question. And then at the end, that's a report that makes a database call and referring to the test case ID, it updates a test run with that ID. There's okay. a lot of teams doing this already. And then, <coughs> excuse me. I know that is, Apple is using test rail for manual tests and there is some integration there. Um, I, I would yeah. say we should build on top of JUnit is probably a good thing to, to look at because Java is too big and I don't think we're dog fooding JUnit HTML reporter on our side. You we can should also see. get JUnit output for um, lots of different, like Pyth you can tell the Python test runner to output right. in JUnit XML format. It's, it's a uh, good common interface to start I would yeah. say, for JUnit uh, HTML report. Okay. That, that makes sense. Um, so I think what I can do is go a little bit further on this issue and try to sketch something out. Um, again, I don't, I don't so see the important thing. And it sounds like Mike was answering it is that from a CI perspective, there needs to be some way to look up. Like I have a unit test that I ran, right? Like what does this relate to? Right. Uh, right. Okay. What do yeah. I need to update? Okay. So, so this is, this is super helpful. I just want to know that this is not like, ridiculous that it does it makes sense whether we do it anytime soon that's like a different discussion like um yeah. whatever we learned at, at product at GitLab, it, it's okay like we, we should have these conversations take like take the time like i'm um, using your time to at least know what that is and you know sketch out something at a high level <laughs> but if we never work on it that's okay because like a community contributor could come in and say like let's do this um okay so before i interrupted you mech i think you wanted to say something or was that Jason? I, I probably interrupted you both. Um, did, did you remember what you were going to say, Mac? Yes, I was going to give you a short demo of this. Oh, thing. yeah, so there's also that. Yeah, yeah, let's see it. <laughs> let, 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 me, let me start the demo first. Um, share screen. Uh, Google Chrome. Can you see this browser? Mm -hmm. I see okay. volunteers list. Yeah. Yes, so this is, this is a product called um, Notion.so. And it's based in, they're based in San Francisco. Um, I was involved in the RubyConf organizer. We're doing a RubyConf in Thailand soon. And then this thing is awesome. It's live edit of a table. And like air table? <laughs> kind of like that. But this, this speaks really well to, um, this is a modern uh, test case management system called TestRail. And I, if you talk about test case management, it, it's always a table-like structure because they need like one column for test name, and then like they have test right, steps on right. the side. So there's something like something like this. So this is something we could probably um, look as an inspiration for mm -hmm. maybe working on the quality center side of things. But this is really really neat. I mean, I know what we're working on live edits and issues, but like right, um, if right, we can right. have tables as well, it'll be awesome. And I, it, this is gonna, yeah, it's gonna be huge. That's pretty cool. Um, on, a, yeah. on a side note, they're, they're doing a lot of things that we are doing here as well, like there's a labels and stuff. So yeah, like feel free to look at, look at um, their, their product. They're kind of like, they're advertising themselves as a Slack um, addition. So they work on top of Slack. Right. And this is like, they have, they have labels, they have issues, they have um, tables. So it's kind of like, it's your, it's your area, Victor. And, um, but is it more yeah. like, it seems like very biz opsy, so it's not very, it's not necessarily for development, but just like just general yeah, work. Yeah, project work. Project management, yep, yep. Exactly. Project management yep. and work collaboration type. Yep. Yeah, 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 okay, that makes sense. Notion, so, okay, yeah, that's a cool domain. Uh, yeah, look it up. 
Okay, this is great. This is great. That this is super helpful in in helping me. So I, I like I said, I know what requirements management is. I, I think I can start moving toward figuring out what a quality management solution is. All right. So uh, I don't have to waste more of your time if it's not needed. Anything else you want? You folks want to chat about? Uh, wanted to chat about the so in in uh, in response to the feedback that I that I have received from the past um, group discussion. So. Um, again, we should be aggressive, and I'm looking forward to work with Jason on this. So I, I put a few more things on our side um, from quality, verify stage that we could probably look into. The first thing is um, multi-project multi -project pipeline support. Um, I, I know there's an issue for this already, but I think that's going to help unblock a lot of things on our side. I want to talk about the roadmap from quality on our side, which is we are integrating more visual diffs, more cross-browser testing, and we're looking to use other tools for now. Um, but I'm happy to help iterate and see where we can help build this in the product. Um, That's awesome. What is the use case for multi-project pipelines that you want? I, I hear a lot, of every, a lot of people say multi-project pipelines, but everybody seems to mean something slightly different. So I'm curious what you are. Right. So the delivery team has, um, uh, let me just share, share my screen real quick. Uh, it'll probably be, be more. <clears throat> the delivery team has a a project that they have um, for their own um, build chat ops and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But then our team, the quality team, um, has our own project as well, where we were responsible for the test automation runs of, um, say, staging of Canary of Nightlies. Yeah. And let me just share my real quick. And we want to be able to be able to link these. Um, these pipelines together. So from quality, you, we have a night lease project, we have a staging project. Mm -hmm. But we're only working on, um, let me click on CI pipelines. We're only working on tests on staging. We're not worried about the deployment. We're not worried about other stuff that's beyond testing. Mm -hmm. So we need to glue this together. And there's a bunch, there's a lot of hacks going on right now. Um, yeah to make this work. It would be nice to provide this support natively in, in GitLab as a feature. Yeah. OK. Um, there's one story that I think maybe, um, or one issue uh, that's uh, triggered by. Uh, you can set, you'll be able to set uh, triggered by as um, uh, a parameter for for maybe your test suite. So um, you could say that this test suite is triggered by these other pipelines and other projects. Um, maybe that will help. OK. Uh, can, you, can you please link the issue? Um, and I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll paste it, it in the, the uh, doc. Where do you want it? OK. I can put it here also. Thank you. OK. Um, I don't want to take more time, but just going to go through this real quick. Okay. Um, that is the most important one, though, in terms of making sure that we really understand what we mean. Okay. Um, because there are multi-project pipelines. Multi pipelines to mean really different things. And OK. Uh, two other things. Uh, we're looking to use some visual diffs, exercise some visual diffs in our testing as well. And it's going to help overlay accessibility testing as well. We, we want to compare the snapshots of Firefox with accessibility, accessibility colors sensitivity on, where if the color changes, somebody with accessibility can't see that object anymore. So we're, we're looking to use a tool called Apply Tools, And they've been in the market for a while, um, very mature. I think they have machine learning layered on top, of, on top of the visual differences as well. And I used this in my past company where they're really good at unstructured data, like data from drones, day one, day two, they can actually help me verify what changed and what's an un unintended change because there's a lot of noisy data. <coughs> so we're looking to use this at a limited capacity. but. Um, I'll be happy to pull you in for any product discovery here. Okay. Uh, the second one is Selenium support. Um, we are setting up some additional help on other providers to help um, fill in the gaps um, on browsers that we don't want to maintain infrastructure on. Uh, for example, Firefox, uh, Android mobile browsers, Apple um, mobile browsers. Those are a lot of coverage that we don't have the manpower to build all the infrastructure. So it's a natural um, fit to go and grab somebody else to help fill in these. So we, we're looking at both Sauce Labs and Browser Stack. But mm -hmm. um, I, don't wanna, I don't wanna say that we should, be, we should replace Browser Stack with our own stuff. Um, I think we can if we, if we have the resource. 
But another easy thing to do is like there's an, there are issues for integrating Slim and views with um, Sauce Labs and browser stack where you display the screenshot or if you can figure some kind of um, integration with their tool, we can just display information on their side. That's another mm -hmm. one. And uh, I think you are aware of this already. There's a, a, selen a Selenium screenshot views inside CI. So if you have a screenshot yeah. for that test, you just display the screenshot in GitLab. Um, so you don't have to That's on the roadmap, but a bit later. Where they yep. Are. yep. 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 So these are all, all the top of mind for me so far. OK, um, cool. I also added these to the Epic for uh, improvements for the quality team. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Um, great. Anything else? Thanks for thanks for that. Uh, uh, no, I think I think that's it. Uh, yeah, I think this is a lot. So. <laughs> okay. Um, last thing. Uh, do <coughs> you mind if I put this on YouTube? I didn't hear anything that was super confidential. Um, I don't. I don't think there's anything confidential. Feel free to edit out anything I said if it's supposed to be. Well, I'm not gonna bother doing reviewing the video. So, like, either you are conservative, then it's fine. I just won't put it on YouTube. Or if, yeah, like, Jason. I think it should be fine. Um, I think it's fine. I just, yeah. I'm sick. <laughs> they can listen to me sounding sick. Nobody cares. My, my kid. Spread the love. <laughs> and my kid was right. roaming around. My kid was sick this morning, and that's why he was roaming around. And so whatever. And my yeah. wife. No, I, I don't mind. It's fine. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Always work at the open and transparent. Yeah. Yep. All right. Appreciate it. All right. Talk to you folks later. Bye now. Right. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.